Everything revolves around money. I think everybody in EVE is, is greedy, uh, including myself. I like to collect more expensive things. I stole from a wormhole quote. Winning people's trust, they have to give you a certain level of access. Spend six weeks uh, making friends. And over the six weeks, slowly I started to get more access to corp hangers and ship hangers. Until one evening, there was a, a decent connection out of that wormhole. I took the opportunity to start moving all of the stuff out, anything that I could. I guess in the grand scheme of things, it's not worth that much, but at the time, it was a lot of money to me. I managed to get it out and the day after when I tried to move it on the last jump to, to safety, that somebody caught my hauler and blew everything up that I stole. So that was uh, six weeks of my hard work and infiltration and betrayal, basically destroyed by somebody else in the space of a minute. No matter what you end up doing yourself, what decisions you make, it's also the people around you that affect you. You know, that's Eve. <laughs>
And finally, Cliff. Hey, guys. I'm Cliff Boland. I'm the CEO of Sorella and Deep Space Enterprises. Um, brand new to the game, about uh, three months in now. Uh, probably the newest CEO with uh, his up to his head in uh, shit that he doesn't quite understand yet, but he is dealing with it fine, and he's having a great time doing it. Happy to be here. Glad to have you here. Uh, glad you reached out. It's always, it's always good to have someone new. Anywho, so some things have happened over the past uh, week or so in EVE. A lot of things. There was uh, something that happened yesterday, which was the 07 show. Anybody uh, watch that? I definitely caught half of it. Uh, I was practicing for AT, so I uh, had to dip in, check it out, and I had to dip out when I got subbed in. So, uh. I feel like you and I and the 614 other people who watched it probably didn't really miss much if you didn't watch the whole thing. I uh, I was going to catch it out early on, but then I completely forgot about it and then caught up on um, Talking Station's live stream that it was basically kind of like, eh, that's nothing new that anyone who hasn't been a part of the media hasn't heard already. Yeah. I kind of slept through it. My alarm didn't go off. <laughs> you, you mean you didn't alarm clock it? Come on. Sorry. <laughs> I typically enjoy uh, what uh, CCB brings us from the 07 show. Uh, typically has some fun segments like uh, the make your own fitting or uh, the celebrity shootout was a good segment for a while. Oh, yeah. That one with Pro God Legend, that was really good. I heard um, Rick Javix complaining on Twitter that his segment has been dropped. Hmm. I did not hear that, but yeah, I, I guess you're right. I. I knew he was going to have a small little segment on there, but it was not there. So, hmm, interesting. Uh, but yeah, so for, as far as a little recap of the 07 show, for those who didn't watch it, uh, the, approximately the first 15 minutes and probably a good 15 to 20 minutes throughout the uh, whole show was mostly player-created commercials. Awesome. Like, we haven't seen those a million times on all the uh, tournaments and whatnot. Uh, that it was basically a rehash of uh, the, well, they were talking about the Alliance tournaments. It was a rehashing of uh, some of the development that went behind the Blood Raider shipyards and the ins and outs of who was trying to get in there. They did some interviews with FCs, uh, Apple Pear, who is the FC for Goons, I believe. Yep, Imperium. Yep. yep. And then, um, oh, whoever the guy was from test that picked up the Moloch BPC and dropped it immediately. He had a great subtitle though, for his name. Yeah. Uh, interestingly enough, I read, I read something, uh, I'm not sure where I read it, but apparently he'd only been in test for all of like two days before this happened. Really? Yeah. I guess he like, he jumped in with his carrier and the ping went out for this roam and he was like, okay, sure. I'll, I'll hop in a, interceptor and see what's up and next thing you know he's got a Moloch BPC in his cargo new guy luck man sometimes it's, it just works yeah. for us yeah yeah uh, so that's pretty much what I picked out of it uh, besides that there was a, a very strange limerick that uh, CCP guard uh, I don't know if it was a riddle but uh, I'll, ju I'll just give it a go over there once was a flagship called Pegasus taxed with a quest quite rigorous took a fleet to a far-off area, poked into a swarm much scarier, which ate them over protest most vigorous. It's CCP Guard, so I'm going to say friendship. I don't know, there was a huge uh, Reddit thread just, like, discussing what it might mean, like, Oh, this first sentence might mean this in reference to you know this this constellation, and uh, this might mean this, and it's very interesting. I'll I'll link the uh, uh, thread into the uh, chat, but yeah, I, I don't know, I don't know about that one. I mean, if Eve nerds can figure out anything, it's it's a riddle. I mean, we figured everything else out. Yeah, crazy. This just went up like this was just posted. Out of nowhere, this wasn't in relation to anything. No, he just said, uh, "Oh, he was like, he's like, 
put his hand up to his ears like I've, I've got a special uh uh incoming broadcast that's coming through it seems like it's it's a limerick and he just spouted it off and i'm just sitting there thinking like what is this in reference to jesus yeah it was really interesting so uh if if reddit can figure it out i, I guess we'll we'll know here shortly anywho um Let's see. There's also two things that were happening on the show. Uh, number one, they're looking for a new or the first show slogan. So if you tweet to uh, CCP or tweet uh, hashtag 07 show and you have a slogan that you would like to use, that's one contest they're having, uh, as, well, as well as a contest that they want you to answer by emailing them what is the best advice to give to new players so if you, if you have a piece of advice you want to give to new players and you think it it's a uh, pretty good stuff email it to oh i don't know somebody at somebody at eve i'll have to look that up but that is that if you watch the 07 show you'll find out all that stuff is it really like only one piece of advice you can give to a new eve player though like i think that's a loaded question man. i mean there's lots of good golden rules there is. yeah but nothing to make a contest over i think they're looking for good comments to add to like a segment on like a regular basis these are tips for new players i think because ccp has such a reach with them posting it on the launcher and posting it in game that the 07 show is going live it pulls a lot of players from outside the eve media community so they have a chance to um enlighten people who who don't key into all of the same communities that we are obviously keyed into with out of game podcasts or live streaming or or Twitch personalities, or is is there anything in game that pops up to say that it's going live? It hasn't times past, yeah. Huh. That'd be interesting to know because that that'd be one good way for players to know. But I feel if it did have something in game that popped up saying, "Hey, the O Seven show is going live," they'd have more than six hundred viewers. It might not happen this time because I didn't see it and I was in game. Was I on? Thunderdome. I think I was in game. And we got a, a confirmation from Asherathi. He says, yes, he was notified that the 07 show was going live. And that's how he remembered to put it on. Uh, I just got the email and a tweet straight to my phone. I don't really realize they had emails, to be honest. I, was it because the API thing died? I heard something about that. Like yes. Or something? Yes, there was a little issue, so that's the next piece of info, or the next piece of news. Um, now, I saw this on Imperium News. I don't know where else it might have been, but apparently there's a status call or a, a call to the API for the character status, uh, which has been been broken. I I guess it's not ha has not been working right since they made the transition from Crest to the Swagger interface and apparently, i guess there's no plans currently to fix it so essentially what it does is uh for for third-party applications like evemon uh it doesn't work right and of course if that doesn't work right then it's hard to uh make make all the uh information pull correctly from the database that's that's as far as i know about it. i'm sure somebody knows more than i do but that's what was on uh the article, so I don't know. Sorry, very, very interesting. So hopefully, uh, I sent a, I sent out a message to CCP Snowden, but uh, maybe mine or uh, Murdud can give him a little, little nudge and see what's up. Yeah, I'll see if I track him down. I feel like it's always Faulty's birthday. It is. Is it, is it always Faulty's birthday? It is. Well, congratulations, Faulty, and happy 732nd birthday. Happy birthday. Anyways, moving quite along. Anybody have anything on that? Because I don't. Ghost training. I'm not going to touch on them because I know 
uh, a lot of other podcasts have touched on it. Apparently, it's a thing where if you had an Omega character, you let it lapse into Alpha, but you don't log in, it'll continue to train as Omega, and it has not been fixed yet. Uh, I'm not. I'm not saying to use it, and I know CCP is tracking this, so I'm not saying you should use it because if you do, you might get caught. But I do know that when this, um, I did notice that when I let one of my accounts go into um, uh, Alpha, I kept seeing on my uh, app, my Eve Android app, that I kept getting notifications saying it was training, and I'm thinking like, I know it shouldn't be training, but I guess I don't know. I thought it was just an API issue. But has this is this being remedied? Anyone know? I it, haven't checked my other um, alphas that I was just uh, using to get some free plex on my other character. Well, not free. I, I mean, I guess I was subbing, but I haven't checked them actually. So they may well, still be training well, as well, I guess. Yeah, don't log in yet. Wait, give another month or so. <laughs> but that's interesting. So there's issue number two that CCP is not fixing. Which is uh, not not bueno, as they say. It's probably a complex issue with like account management and omegas, and probably legacy code. I'm gonna blame legacy code. Always blame legacy code. Never not blame legacy code. I would assume that it would be something that they would have fixed like right away as soon as it was reported. It would be something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, resources and everything. You know, I I never really understood the legacy code joke until CCP or former CCP employee Fox4 explained it to me that everything is like architecturally built from like the top down. So like something at the very, very top will affect a whole bunch of things below it. And then if a dev wanted to tweak something through the whole system, they would just put it in one of the higher levels. And that higher level thing would affect everything below it. And then there was too many things pushed into the higher levels. And then now if you touch any of those things, it affects crazy things below it in weird ways. Crazy. And that's why legacy code. Yeah, just, just don't touch it. You won't break it. And that will be good. But that's not how we get new things. You just gotta yeah. put them in at a lower level, so that yeah, real, real low, at the most bottom. But wrapping up the uh, the CCP and Eve direct news, uh, they've been they announced. I think it was Wednesday, so just just a few days ago that their uh, Tech Three Cruiser focus group has been selected. So if you go to their uh, dev blog on that you can see who's all been selected i think it was like uh maybe 18 different individuals who were selected for that uh that's this is gonna be the first round essentially where they're gonna uh kind of look at some things that are going on uh, but essentially what they've asked is what they said was that they they know they're gonna remove they're gonna go from five subsystems to four and they're gonna make the rigs where they're uh actually are replaceable so you can pull the rigs out without uh, destroying them. Uh, not exactly sure on the details of that, but they have asked that as of downtime on the 11th of July, if you are in a T3 cruiser, make sure you are docked or in a safe spot because the next time you log in, your shit gonna be fucked up. Yeah, it seems like they are bringing out the nerf bat to a couple of uh, over abused fits and they're gonna try to bring in T3 cruisers back into a power level that makes sense. Um, right now they overshadow uh, uh, hacks, heavy assault cruisers uh, quite aggressively, and there isn't really a good niche for them, especially in fleet doctrine fights. And then some of the speculation on talking in stations from this weekend was pushing towards that they could bring them more into a less Bring them down out of a fleet of uh, a ship of the line for fleets and more into a support role or more of a component of a fleet instead of the only thing you bring is Loki's legions and Proteus's. Are Tengu's not a thing anymore? I mean, not for the standard null block large fleet where you bring 
you know, as many Lokis and Legions as you can, or sorry, Legions and Proteus as you can stick into a fleet, and then Lokis for webs, and then additional Proteuses for scrams. Very true. And a thing that, uh, Meridad, you, you put in the notes, you want to go ahead and mention that about the. New yeah, AT. yeah. So that was another thing that came up. Um, the two topics on uh, talking stations was AT and T3 cruiser rebounds. But for those of us who are con- participating in the feeder rounds of the Alliance tournament, which will occur in two weeks, oh, less than two weeks, two weekends left. Uh, this weekend's Theomaki, next weekend's feeder rounds. So if your fits have the current T3 cruisers in them with a current subsystems, which is likely, I mean, some people might have them in there. They're not heavily incentivized through the Alliance tournament points values, but you might see them, especially as a booster or uh, perhaps as a support ship, maybe a mainline DPS. Um, Tinkers may be coming back into fashion this year as the energy transfers were uh, unbanned from previous years. So local reps with an energy transfer might come back into style. Um, but if you have a bunch of fits that you've been planning for three months with the tree three cruisers as they are now, they're going to change on July 11th, which is midway through the tournament. So the second and the more important rounds of the AT where uh, <laughs> you fight for your life, uh, you're going to need a whole new fit. So put your theory crafting hat on as soon as those changes come out, which if the T3 cruiser rebalance panel has just really been brought it together, hopefully you're going to have enough time to provide good feedback so that changes can be constructively applied. Yeah, that'll definitely be uh, a sticky wicket. If you will. But yeah, interesting stuff. Anybody got any uh, comments on that? It's open forum, guys. That stuff, I mean, as a four month old player, that stuff's just so outside my realm of uh, <laughs> what I'm dealing with now. Uh, I'm looking at my Tech 3 uh, Tactical Destroyer, but uh, Tech 3 cruisers are a little bit away from me. Yeah, you'll get there. Oh, I know, I know. I'm looking forward to it. One thing I was interested to hear is that they're not planning on removing the skill point loss from dying in a T3 cruiser. Yeah, I think that's kind of important. As an immersion hound, I really appreciate stuff like that. I think it's 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 nice to um, to punish us on death. We look at death really flippantly in Eve. Um, and so I think that's a great thing. I think I really appreciate that. And I look forward to losing skill points. And I think yeah, uh, Matterall brought up a good good point the other day that it's kind of like an end game uh, kind of thing. You'll just constantly have to be skilling these things up. And that was a really interesting point to think that, that you know, to keep these tech threes alive, you got to keep working at them. Yeah, because realistically, that's the only, uh, that's really the only form of, of SP loss that we have nowadays, you know, as far as, uh, unintended SP loss because before you know that you'd run into the issue of oh I forgot to uh, upgrade my clone because I, I went over you know X amount of skill points and then you died and you lost all those skill points and you had to retrain that but n- now this is the only uh, surprise SP loss that I remember the upgrading clone mm-hmm. I-, I lost Nimitar Battleship 5 on my PvP off because I forgot to upgrade or not upgrade, but um, buy next a, level. Not buying a new clone because I I died previously and I reshipped. I went back out. I didn't get a you know get a new clone upgrade, and I died again and I lost. Yeah, <laughs> that that hurt. <laughs> that that hurt. The the good old days. That was the old school like end game when you lost like. Wing Command 5 or Exhumers 5. Ugh. Yeah, that that were... Mimitar Battleship 5 skill, that was like, I, I want to say that was over like 30 days right there. Oh, I bet. I bet. I remember when I first tried Eve um, back at launch, it was uh, it was just, it was that same kind of, I, I lost some SP just to, in a fucking forget it or something. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I can handle this. And I had to walk away from it. Yep. 
my, how things have changed. So enough reminiscing in old times. Uh, there was some some battle reports. There was some player news over the weekend, uh, over the past week, really. Uh, we had the Blood Raider Shipyards last week. That came and went. You know how that went. It was it was a loss. No no Moloch BPCs or anything of that sort. Uh, a second shipyard was discovered in Z. That's Z Tech M5 Alpha One. Uh, and there's been some uh, some coverage on that. Some live news coverage from uh, Rivra. Anybody yeah, it seems that? that because there are so many people looking to cover the Blood Raider uh, Sotillo kills, that it's actually suppressing content as far as people actually going out and trying because it's so easy to come and harass the fleets who are actually trying to legit attempt it with scepters or sabers or whatever. Yeah, didn't the last team that had it down, down to reinforcement just let that expire because they didn't even want to worry about going after the loot? And, and, you know, having to chase down whoever was going after it. Yeah, for sure. Um, one thing I was considering about for these Sotillos and potentially for other high-value loot, uh, I know they made a change to the rec HPs uh, a while back to uh, reduce the ease of just shooting wrecks with, you know, small ships in order to deny loot. But um, perhaps for those Sotillos, maybe it could be a hackable container that's um, unkillable, and you actually have to bring in a, a data or relic analyzer and open the chest, so you actually would need to hold the field in order to loot the loot. I don't know about unkillable, but I certainly do like that idea. Yeah. Because you think something like that would be would be under heavy lock and key, even after it being destructed, it would... It would have some sort of encryption on it yeah and it's not too much to ask to ask a null block of 20 to 50 guys to bring one scanner or one hacker you know absolutely yeah that's an actually a really good idea i digs all right um Meredith, I think you put this one about the dead Cremoas. If I remember correctly Cremoas is an AT ship from two years ago it is. Uh, it is definitely a valuable loss. Uh, the kill mill is there. Uh, these values uh, are always over 100 bill, unless it's one of the lesser desired AT ships, which maybe they'll fall to 80 or 90. But uh, the Kermoas is popular for sure. Um, another one of these AT ships that has amazing stats, uh, amazingly overpowered compared to other ships of the line. But uh, I don't know the full story on this guy, but uh, he was caught by a harpy and an astero in Syndicate. Okay. That link you gave me was for a character. I don't see a Cremoas. Oh, just go to Zed Kill. It's the first uh, most valuable loss this week. And Imperium News has uh, released a short article on it as well. It's always exciting to see these ships out in the space. I don't know if you've ever encountered any of the AT ships roaming through LOSEC or anything. What, wait, what is the amount on there? 120 billion, 599 million, 837,685 ISK, or $1,586.70 USD equivalent. That is impressive. And it's not even anything too fancy on there. There's only 50 of each, right? I think the hull is what uh, costs the most. Exactly, but there's only 50 of the hull ever generated for the game. Well, now there's 49. Wow. Now the guy lost one before, too. Oh, wow. So that was his second Kremos loss. Bless his heart. Killboard Red forever. Uh, but yeah, it's really cool to see them out in space. I've encountered uh, a Whiptail before. Uh, one of those died just a couple weeks ago. Uh, I've encountered a Gold Magnate, which we uh, chased quite intensely. Uh, 
not an AT ship, but of a similar rarity. Wait, let's 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 go back a second. Did we see the actual details of the fight? Because it was just a harpy and an astero. I don't know them personally. They might be in the article, but yeah, just a harpy and a astero. Harpy and an astero. What happened there? <laughs> Zeshina from uh, chat st notes that the 11 Krimos have died. Good lord. I'm sure more will die come Alliance Tournament weekends. Even though there's only one unique allowed per round, per fleet, uh, I'm sure more will get pulled out for that weekend, especially the second weekend. Yep. Anyways, carry on. No, that's all. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, so next thing I wanted to cover was um, for the past, I don't know, a few weeks or so, I know Matterall has been talking about putting together the Imperium News uh, Eve Comprehensive Mining Guide. Well, apparently it's finally out. Uh, so if you go to the imperium.news slash eve dash mining, that's, uh, that's a new mining guide. I actually looked over it and it's, it's it seems pretty comprehensive and it's... Uh, Got some good information so if you're new to mining or want to learn how to mine better or more gooder go ahead and check out that guide and it'll, it'll give you everything you need to know good stuff I'm already there already yeah does it have the real cool changes in it yes i mean it's it's very up to date should we link it to doom chinchilla fuck that guy well he needs to know about those real cool changes i don't know who matterall's photographer is but my god they're they're good apparently, yeah apparently the uh the art department or the uh yeah the content art department at the imperium.news website is doing a lot of good work from what i hear good for them yeah art department's always ahead of the curve true story yeah, no, I've, I've been meaning to jump into this um, <clears throat> guide. I've just been a little busy writing, writing my own big, big uh, manifesto. Oh, a manifesto. <laughs> yeah, so so I've just been a little bit distracted right now. That, that'll happen. All right. Two more, two more things. I promise, and then we're gonna we're gonna get into the the fun and the meat and potatoes because that's why we have these uh, fine individuals here with us tonight. But Theomaki, we've been talking about it for a few weeks now. That is indeed this weekend. It is Saturday, Saturday, June third on the Thunderdome server. Is Theomaki? You cannot no longer register if you have not registered. Sorry for you. You get to watch me and Murdad suck at it on Saturday. Uh, I want to say it is at 1400 Eve time. Is that correct? 1400? What in the dear fuck time in the morning is that? Oh, no, no, no. Excuse, excuse me. It's going to be 2 o'clock Central, so 1400 Central time for me, so... Oh, well, that's completely reasonable. What is that? 2200? 2100? I don't know, 1400 Central US time. So two o'clock in the afternoon for me. So if you're sitting around sometime one o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon in the States, uh, that's when you can watch Theomaki. Uh, there was an error on Thunderdome today. So if you've created a Thunderdome character for AT practicing, it makes you start up a new character. You have to put in all the character stuff. You can make it a funny name. And that's just your character on Thunderdome. Then you give it all the skill points in the world through a slash command. And then once you're ready, then you have to join the Theomaki group. There's a corp that you can join. And then the instructions on how to participate are within the corp bulletin. But if you created a Thunderdome character in the last week that it's been available, those characters have all been deleted and the corps and alliances have been deleted. So if you need to practice again this weekend or during the week, make sure you start up a new character and go through the whole creation process. Otherwise you're gonna be delayed by 10 minutes. Hey, yep, yep, yep. Uh, somebody was asking 
in the uh, chat channel. The Yomaki? Question mark? Yeah, so the Yomaki, if you haven't heard about this before, it's going to be a winner-takes-all Hunger Games-style Royal Rumble where hundreds of players, I, I, I think it was just under 200 players, I'm not sure what the actual count was, uh, will all be in one system on the Thunderdome, which is the uh, test practice server for doing a tournament practice, whatnot. Uh, you're going to be given a set of ships to choose from and uh, it'll be whoever gets the ship takes the ship and you all start fighting each other and whoever's the last man standing wins is that's i think that's about the gist of it yep yep as far as so, i know so myself and meredith are going to stream it we're going to figure out the details i think i think we might do individual streams um as far as his channel and then my channel and then maybe we'll try and combine it into one video on this channel and we'll, but we'll be talking on comms either way yeah we might be able to do that uh, yeah i think maybe yeah we'll figure it out i'm sure we can do something we'll have to figure it out before saturday yep that is true coordination all that finally one cool thing that i came across uh today on the wonderful and famous reddit that i i hate going to but i will go to because that's where the eve news comes out and i wouldn't have known about this otherwise uh a tool created by Callan or kaylin ashford from test alliance uh it's it's a web-based tool which allows you to log uh, signatures that you scan down and you can input them and share them with your alliance or your corporation and so that way everybody knows where where the signatures are what you know what they are and all that fun information so if they want to scan it down they don't they don't have to if, if they don't need it yeah, yeah. there are similar tools out there already uh, this is similar to siggy or to um there's another one. Uh, yeah, worm. No. There's a there's a couple different wormhole tool apps out there that you pasta can get or in something? them. There's something called Pasta. I don't know. Wormholes. I don't know. There's a lot weird places. Pathfinder. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say Wormopedia or something. That'd be a funny name. Yeah, but uh, some, of, some of the comments I saw on this uh, Reddit thread, and, and very valid indeed, was, you know, hey, great tool. However, you know, we don't trust you to have, you know, this information if we're, if we're tracking down these things. You know, who are you going to sell it to, whatnot. I understand that, but from what I understand with the, with the uh, API and all that stuff, like, it's none of that stuff is seen by the person who who uses the, the API, right? So I mean, I don't know why people are are too worried about whether or not someone's going to take their information from the API. Well, <clears throat> like it doesn't Path work like that. Pathfinder is one of those sites that uses uses your API and tracks your ship's data and actually communicates and sends an alert into Eve with you. Um, you can actually set your destination through pathfinder and i'm sure there's other ones that do that out there as well i'm not i'm not sure um and i've thought for a long time like okay well who's you know is this mittens you know ultimate plan of knowing where absolutely every player is at any given time or something like that no you know tinfoil hats off for a moment but it really this you know it's a git they have it there's a github you can you can uh, download the install file. You can install it onto your own private server, and then guess what? You're the one in control of that data, right? It's just about le what level do you want to go? Um, <laughs> you know, I've I've my whole corp uses uh, not my whole corp, but myself and, and my scouts use Pathfinder. Um, you know, when I think about it, and I'm, I'm you know, I, I I do have some concerns, but at the same time. Um, the guy who's made it, I'm forgetting his name now. Um, you know, he said, here's the GitHub, you know, you want it, have it. So there will come a point that if, you know, if we do keep using it, if we want to go that route, we'll probably install it on our own server or whatnot. But yeah. uh, I, I don't, I just, I don't see much threat to it. I, 
I haven't been killed because of it, but at the same time, yeah. I can't prove if I have or haven't, right? Yeah, I mean, same same thing with this guy. He he said, "Hey, here's here's the um, the the code for it. You can, you're more than welcome to look at it. It's it's uh, open open source. Please go ahead and look at it." But also, like Ashroth, he says in the chat, uh, "There's apparently a rule, or you know, when you when you sign up for the developers development." kit or development license it's a rule against that so obviously you wouldn't want to be doing that because if you get caught you get your uh access revoked so it would it would do no good for somebody to try and take information and what what information they're going to know what what signatures you've scanned down who cares the thing about yeah, it where my, my C2 is okay come come pop me i'm gonna be popped anyways yeah the speculation that i've heard from wormholers is that certain groups will take advantage of wormhole apps to draw their own data from it and then they'll start to know the chains and if they really want to get to a place and they don't have a chain scan down they can just glean some information from the other people who use the app and then all of a sudden they know the chain and you know if you're being evicted by that group the group will always have a way to get to your hole yeah i mean it's it's a stretch is it is it a concern maybe until someone can say what group <laughs> it's just tinfoil. Yeah. I, I, I'm sure you could figure out who owns most of formal space. <laughs> it's me. You got me. I knew it. Yes. Soon it'll be me, guys. Don't worry. Indeed. Indeed. I don't go there. There's silly people there. Well, with that said, uh, that wraps up the Eve news wraps up the player news and uh, commentary and all that stuff. Now I'd like to move in to something very interesting. So uh, tweets went out, Reddit posts went out uh, this past week that somebody, a fun individual by the name of Trump's fingers, because Trump's fingers are so cute and whittle, uh, has somehow gained access to the Eve Radio Alliance. So here with us, we got uh, some special guests who are going to kind of run us through what what exactly what happened. Uh, where do I start? <laughs> in the in the beginning. Well, tell us who what Eve Radio is for those who don't know, and then uh, Eve Radio is a radio station. Um, that's it, been around since beta and it's it's basically just the, it's a you know internet radio station that's made for the eve community um you know this we have a lot of djs on there that you know like do contests or uh giveaways and, and stuff and also just like a bunch of community events that um djs also uh, plan out and and uh, and do. Um, that's pretty much the basics. <laughs> um, but we had an alliance. This was started back in 2014, so a couple years now. Um, it was actually requested by several listeners as well as staff members to, you know, get more of an in-game presence out there for us. Um, be able to you know do stuff you know more stuff together and also um you know flying under the e-radio name and banner you know in support of e-radio um so so that's how the alliance originally started that's that's that was this whole purpose in a sense so um there's been also i think one or two times where we did like use the alliance for like some uh, secret mining ops in uh, Providence that we would um, you know just chill out, hang out, and just you know have fun. Um, so there's that. But aside from that, it's just more of a of a place for you know just people that just wanna come and support the radio, hang out, and all that. Cool. Yeah. So, as far as like people in in the alliance or within it, was that mostly 
just DJs, listeners, or uh, in the alliance, the majority was just listeners and supporters of the station. Um, I, I want to say that there were uh, like a heavy number of like alts that would, you know, join. Just you know, they have their main character doing their doing their own thing, but they wanted to have you know a tune in the alliance to, you know you know be able to just you know have that that tune if they wanted to play on it and you know support the station um so um yeah, yeah. so yeah so you had the the e radio alliance which was which was an in-game representation of the e radio service which uh like so, some people are saying in the chat i know i personally I listen to e-radio all the time because you can pretty much uh, either either if it's with a DJ who's live or if it's just the uh, the jukebox, there's always pretty much guaranteed to be some, guaranteed to be some pretty good tunes. Uh, I know some of the some of the people I listen to listen to uh, listen to YouTube. I listen to DJ Kermit. Um, back I when... don't think it was just about the music though. It was also just about the community that that we had. You know. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you have all this DJs on, you, you, like, you're in game, you get to hang out on the channel, and there's always, like, at least, um, like, 70 to 100 people on there, and then you have, like, maybe, um, like, actual talking, though, like, you would have, like, maybe, like, 15, 20 at one time, but it was just a, a just a great community, it, and it, it still is, it's always, you know, just, the people is you know is what it what makes it what it is yeah so i mean that's what the eve radio alliance was so what exactly happened last week or what what led up to the alliance being uh escorted off into the hands of somebody else well for the alliance we had I, I I keep using the term open doors, as long as they you know follow certain rules because we did have you know we did have standings out in Providence and we had access to the Intel channel so we had to have some you know rules and as long as they followed that then they were good we let them in. Um, but there was somebody in particular that took advantage of this. <laughs> And over time, he brought in, I don't even know how many corporations he brought in in total, but it was enough for him to use his corporations to vote out our executive corporation and for him to take over. So that's essentially what happened is, you know, how, how he was able to, to get the alliance he never had any permissions. He never had any power in the, the holding corp. It was all because he took advantage of us, you know, letting all these people in and used it against us to take over the alliance. Wow. Yeah. So let me let me go ahead and read because this uh, this guy, like I said, Trump's fingers. He. Put a post in in Reddit about it, and the uh, Reddit title was "I staged an alliance coup, and what is an alliance worth?" I was elected the executor of E Radio. He's I like how he says elected. I was elected the executor of E Radio Alliance. It took the old executor two months to notice. Uh, we are made up of 55 corps and 1,120 characters. <clears throat> the old executor Hosh Hoshiko Ginkuen slash you so that's you uh wants it back her claim is she's not playing games which i i agree you should not be playing games with this guy uh but would like to be the executor role how can you lead a space guild and not want to play the game i'm an eve for life kind of guy so it might be fun to keep my own alliance however the old executor feels that trump's fingers grabbed her by the oopsie and being a digit of trump's tiny hands so this guy basically sounds like a douche canoe and says what would it take for you to give up control of an alliance so i i, I don't know why it doesn't say why he did it apparently he just wanted to be an asshole 
Is that pretty much yeah, the gist of it? That that's basically what it sounded like to me. Um, he just did it because he could. Simply put, yeah. there. I mean, this alliance has nothing of value to anyone outside of radio. It has no sub, no structures, no anything. You know, that it was just a place for people to come and hang out and you know do their thing. Um, he just did it because he could. <laughs> that that's that's basically it. Yeah. So uh, you know, for those who don't know, the pretty much the, the idea of this, they they call it a waxing. Uh, some people might call it just corporate espionage. Some people, who knows what they call it, but uh, it's 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 one of those things that's been happening in Eve uh, for the history of it. Uh, a waxing, uh, as we know, is basically just killing fellow fellow court mates, stealing corp assets, something like that. But apparently, uh, the term a walks comes from a person who actually was named a walks, and now the act of doing what he did is also known as a waxing. Uh, but it means to attack or destroy without warning the ship of a pilot in the same player-created corporation. It also means to steal from the Alliance or Corp funds or hangers. So, I mean, that's what this person did. Um, you know, that's stuff like that has happened. That's why the Band of Brothers Alliance is no longer around because they were uh, a little active subterfuge and the Matani got in there and shut them on down. So that's uh that's one of the game yeah, styles. There was no assets they gained from this term. We had assets in the holding corp, but all that I did was flip to his corp. So he doesn't he doesn't get any of our assets or the is that we had mm. either. So it was just yeah. Yeah, just and there. and and that's the stark contrast between, you know, trying to take down Band of Brothers, obviously kind of important uh tactically and uh, situationally. Uh, whereas this is, what like why like it makes makes no sense to me, and I wish I had gotten a hold of this person, but uh, I think he's kind of gone off the off the grid, uh, off the radar a little bit. Petty edgelordism. What's that now? Yeah, I go ahead. Just being a petty edgelord, you know, like, oh look what I can do! I can cause misery to someone else, and I don't care really about like what it is. It doesn't gain me anything. And there's one comment in here that actually like is is true in my opinion is about the type of alliance that it was. You know, it wasn't your. I don't I don't call it like a traditional alliance. Um, it, it was my son alliance just made for the radio community. And there's one comment in here that I saw. I'm trying to find it again about discouraging content creators from you know being able to do stuff for the for their communities and I, I think that's you know also like just like you know having stuff like this done it does discourage you know these types of communities from doing so you know doing stuff like like this yeah I can see that aspect of it but I mean as for <clears throat> Excuse me, but as far as like uh, content that you guys put out, nothing has really realistically changed. No, I mean we'll still be around, obviously. I mean that's not going to change. We'll still have our DJs doing what they do. We'll have, you know, um, we'll still have you know, our DJs doing contests, doing in-game events and whatnot. So that, that's not going to change. Are we going to see like an Eve Radio Reloaded or an Eve Radio Dot? That'd be the way to go. Um, there is, we, we, if we don't get this one back, then there is plans to recreate it in the future. Um, and just for the, the comment in Twitch, um, that tune that I, I log in, that, that, that holding tune in the holding corp, I don't, log on to her unless I need to do something in the Alliance. Otherwise, I'm off my other tunes. And also what happened is that when this, when these types like votes happen to change the executive corp, the, the current executive does not know what's going on until they need to log in and do something. So I was not AFK. I was not AFK at all. 
it's just the fact that I don't log into that tune very often and we didn't notice it until we needed to, to get in and do something, which we had a listener that wanted to join the Alliance. We logged in and we weren't able to do anything. And that's when we realized, oh no, something's happened, <laughs> you know? You do not get a notification. No, you do not. When when votes are being cast to change the executor corporation, you, you, there's no notification. It's a silent vote. That's that's what it's called also on the wiki, a silent vote. Nobody knows. Interesting. Yeah, like you said, like you why would you have thought you needed to look? It's not something that you would think somebody would like, oh, let me just steal or try to gain access to this. I mean, it's, it's silly. Yeah. Well, okay. So for, for clarification, a lot of, a lot of people say that this is not, you wouldn't consider this a a waxing. My apologies. Uh, I thought that was just kind of a general term, but you just call it corp theft, I guess. So that's what it was. It was a corporation theft, alliance theft, or, and just to, I guess, clarify again, is that alliances for each corporation has their own single vote on who they want to do as, you know, has the executive position. Um, if the shares, the shareholders, that's corporation level. That's not alliance level. You don't distribute shares in an alliance level. Hmm. Sorry, this is a bit of a one-sided conversation between Marshmallow and chat here and uh, Erica. But, uh, Marsh I just wanted to point that out, so I'm done. It's all good. I, it's fine. It, you should tune in live if you want to contribute here from the audience. Well, I mean, on the replay, they're going to see the chat too, so just figure. I'm just anyway, pushing. I'm, I'm just pushing. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> yeah, so... Either way, um, it really is disappointing to see that somebody would actually uh, do this. Whether or not it was it was due to being AFK, whether it was not, whether it was uh, not paying attention, regardless of the situation, uh, it's a pretty low blow. And I think that's something, you know, especially for a community-oriented uh, thing, uh, it's not one of those things you just kind of look over and say, oh, well, you know, maybe should have paid attention. I mean, it's really besides the point what's weird is is they haven't contacted really for strong demands or offered yeah, a price well, like a ransom or something like hey we'll give it back for this much because i mean i'm sure if they did you have you have enough e radio listeners who would say okay we'll, we'll try to donate to this cause which certainly i would donate to that to try and get the uh, alliance back um now did so I've tried reaching out to him, Erica. You've tried reaching out to this guy. Was there any yeah, any demands? He hasn't responded back to me, so I don't know. Oh well. Well, um, what about you, Morgan? What What are your thoughts on this whole thing? To be honest, it's I didn't re, I usually don't go on my DJ main DJ all mostly because you know I usually do fleets on my main account. And to be honest, sir, it, to be honest, while it is sad, it really doesn't affect me since you know I'm really bad. I'm really kind of a naughty person just using my main. On the other hand, it's just like I don't I don't know how I mean it's really bad, but I don't see the point of just you know why I just make a new alliance and stuff and not ha and you know, do betting. Like, okay, this is gonna sound really bad, but like, I don't, I, uh, it's just weird to me, but I don't know, never mind. I think the guy should still be called out. Like, you know, he should, you know, Trump's fingers, like, you know, you're just out openly grabbing a corp that's more community based than asset based than you know is about the power it's about you know community and you're just opening up nabbing it and griefing it in a certain way and it's not a punishable offense but that's what it is right and that's where i get on this like it's it's petty edgelordism and in, in a nihilistic kind of way um and i think it should be called out but i mean at the same time what can that call out do except the community now know that that eve radio you might not want to engage with right 
Yeah, I, I've got. I pretty much got the feeling that this guy took the alliance, has changed hands. He's if he did get anything out of it, I, I doubt he did. But that character's probably long gone. Yeah. So. To me, to be honest, like the value of this has like very very limited time scale, right? Like it only is going to take like a week of frustration to be like, well, we're just going to make Eve dash radio dot. And it's, it's going to be unrecognizably different. And you'll just invite the players who are active and some of the legacy players who don't log in very often will get dropped, but you'll just link it in all the places and people will catch a wind of the new place to, to find the Eve radio personalities. Yeah. And we're talking about it now as it's a, as it's current event, but is it any kind of grand feat? compared to, you know, something like what happened with Bob, is it going to be Eve legend of the time that, you know, douche nozzle took over Eve radio. I think it'll pass into the winds of time, but uh, if anyone has the executor of uh, PL, I, I'm sure I can find a use for it. <laughs> Anyways, so I don't know. Do we got any uh, final thoughts or ideas about this one before the uh, all the fun continues to overflow in the uh, Twitch chat? I mean, it's a cautionary tale, like uh, as Marsha has kind of pointed out. Um, know the mechanics of Corp and Alliance management. It's a complicated, tricksy, old school system. Like alliances are not intended to be in the game. They were just kind of stickered on top of the corp system that's why there are no alliance bookmarks there are a lot a lot of whole alliance functionality it's just kind of a sticker on top of the corp system so make sure you know all the archaic rules if you're a corporation leader or a ceo or you're running an alliance um, it is complicated and there's lots of tricks and that goes from running the corp running the alliance running your structures running solve bills you know some of the best history is failed by uh or <laughs> best history is brought to you by a failed solve bill, right? So, true story. All right, all right. Well, Erica, I'm I'm sorry to hear about that, but you know, hopefully, we get some some good news in the future on that one. But uh, just a, a lesson to be learned by all. Uh, yeah, it was indeed a lesson to be learned. Yep. So, moving along, we've got uh, Mr. Boland here, Cliff Boland, who, like you said, he's a new player. Uh, so, yeah. How, how's life? How's life uh, treating you there in Eve Online, at Cliff? Good, man. Um, I'm docked in my wormhole uh, station right now. I've had a you know really weird come about. Um, all the power and kind of situation I've gotten myself into. Um, the owner of two asterisks um, and a corp of, of veterans, uh, or a CEO of a corp of mostly veterans actually, but um, some new players. Yeah. So you, you said you start you started playing the game, or you actually you, you you tried it back when it first came out, and then pretty much like a lot of people, you said, uh, "Fuck this game, it's too hard." or too difficult and uh, took a long, 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 long break before he came back. It was it was less of a, a fuck this game and it was more of a like a oh my god I wish I could actually like do this game like I wish I could get my time right for this game. Mm -hmm. um, you know I came out just I, you know I was just finishing with Star Wars Galaxies uh, when I was starting uh, college and it had just hit its new you know combat update which was an absolute disaster for me and i was looking for something new and uh you know i came across eve and i was like oh this looks great um but again starting college I, technically i had all the time in the world to sink into a video game but i just you know i tried not to and i didn't um but i did the 14 day trial I, I enjoyed it and but I, at the same time losing that sp and losing that ship and and, you know, not and jumping straight into kind of station trading, I was like, okay, this is a time sync game and I'm not ready for that. Yeah. So then flash forward, how many years? 
uh, well, that was, you know, I guess 10 years ago now. And I was literally at a party with a guy um, picking up my wife from a party and uh, we're talking about video games. I was playing Kerbal Space Program. He was like, oh, yeah, yeah, you ever play EVE? And I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, I did a 14-day trial of it, talking about it. And he went off about it. And so walking home from that party, I was like, mm, you know, I should try another 14-day trial, see what's going on. I didn't even know it was free to play. Um, download the client. I'm like, oh, oh, it's free to play. Oh, oh, honey, look, it's free to play. I can play for a little longer. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so I start my alpha character, jump into this uh, mining tune and do my thing. And there's a, a mining association that I decided to join, a little corp. Um, they're moving moving along. They had a little Raitaru set up in um, Hamatar system or Hamatar region. Mm -hmm. I was out there with them. And um, they ended up joining a NullSec Alliance um, Army of New Eden. Or no, ob Obese Space Pandas. Um, they joined, um, and, uh, then later left from what I've heard, but, uh, that kind of started going sideways because their security officer or the person who they were calling their security officer, who's supposed to be in charge of, you know, checking APIs and kind of greeting the new players and was also recruitment was, um, a non-English speaker, um, I believe from, well, I don't, I'm not sure where Eastern Europe, but was often like really vulgar and, and was constantly say, claiming they were drunk online, um, speaking in all caps, harassing new players, harassing myself, harassing, you know, um, new members. And we'd go to the CEO and say, hey, or I went to the CEO and said, you need, you know, can you do something about this? This is not a pleasant experience. And it was a lot of deflection and a lot of, um, you know, oh, they're just joking and whatnot. And it's like, yeah, but it's not, it's not fun. It's not fun to be around. And um, one of her, one of the, the CEO's other officers pulled me aside and said, hey, I've just been kind of invited in this corp and now I have all these roles um, I and I'm seeing this go really weird. I'd like to leave. Would you like to, uh, you know, kind of like in what you're doing, asking the questions, do you want to come along and uh, start this corp? You can you can do what you want with it, lead it. I'm, I'm he, you know, he admits to himself he's not much of a leadership type. Um, but he likes, you know, the way I was thinking or whatever. And says, you know, we can set up an Astro House, we can get this going, and do you want to do it? I said, fuck yeah, you know. Part of the reason I got into EVE was the empire building and the the larger aspects of it. You know, I, I read a, a story about Chiba and, and his brokering, and I said, that's, you know, like, that's the kind of game I want to play. Um, there he is. And so, you know, here we are now, month afterwards and we've shrunk a bit and then we're on a upward swing again but we've got two asterisks up one in uh, a wormhole one in a nice little high sec system for mining it's uh it's going well yeah it's awesome yeah it i've just i've not won for servitude i've i you know even when i was in that corp i was asking too many questions and um and it was just, it was kind of destined that I, I had to, you know, lead something and s slowly grow into it, right? So, and here I'm doing that, and I've got great people around me um, to help me. Like, the that's one thing, like, this community constantly is putting out great veterans who are just giving their time and, and they, you know, the resources that they've accumulated over time to people like myself to just experience and have great time with it. And so, shout out to them, and shout out to you know, hosts of podcasts like this that make things like possible for people like me to learn. It's a, it's a joy. Yeah. So I was actually, um, uh, a little bit earlier today, I was actually looking up, you know, who you were and who your corporation was. And, you know, I was looking through some of the, the players, and like you said, you really do have some, uh, some, some veteran players. I'm looking at one guy right now who has been in since 2003. Yeah, um, that's our, our chief uh, diplomat, Shinsan, a uh, mm -hmm. hell of a guy, has really been this kind of little mentor for me, and, um, you know, I probably just put a target on my head, maybe by mentioning his name, I don't know how many enemies he still has out there in the world, but um, it's been uh, a pleasure, you know, speaking to guys like him, and, and hearing the stories, and then also hearing them echoed out in the media, it's been really fun. 
Yeah, so I mean, like, it's crazy that you go from, like, yeah, I know about this game, to, yeah, sure, I'll pick it up again, to, yeah, well, now I'm, you know, owning a corporation, and I have less people in here. So, like, what, what do you see for, like, the future of, of this corporation? Are you going to try and, like, join a, you know, a bigger alliance, or, uh, I mean, you just kind of make, make your own thing? Because we talked about last week, small, you know, small little no-name alliances. Is that kind of, like, what you wanted him to do? Um, no name is not necessarily what I'm interested in. I mean, right. The big, the big draw for me and all the games I play, um, from Crusader Kings to all the civilizations to all the wars are about this larger, bigger picture. Right. And, you know, as much as I enjoy the tactics of total war, I enjoy the larger map way more. Um, and same, same here in Eve. Right. And I, I often, <laughs> I, I'm, you know, I tell my corpies a lot that it's like, Oh, I just, I, I don't see the game as, you know, mining or PVP or this or that. It's like the game is managing a corp and building a corporation and, and running an alliance. All the rest are simply tools to do that with. And, uh, and that's just simply what I've adopted into it. Right. And, um, and so I don't, I don't see necessarily, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a very diplomatic person to begin with. So I want to work with as many groups and as great groups and as great um, power blocks as I can to meet as many people as I can to embed myself in this community more. Um, but I'm just not the servitude type either. And so you're, I just don't think you're going to see me jumping and, and towing someone else's line. Um, but you're also not going to necessarily you know i don't want to just sit in the corner either cool so is cerulean what is it cerulean 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 deep space enterprises are you guys recruiting uh yeah we're always recruiting um we uh are pretty new player friendly as well because i love working with new people and and it helps me um you know, refresh my memory about all the game uh, by, by sharing my knowledge that I've given. Uh, but we're always recruiting veterans who are interested in uh, jumping in on some wormhole stuff, um, getting into, you know, just sitting back in, in high second mining as well. Uh, we have beautiful little um, system, Darmok Plaza. We're about to set up uh, Jalad um, engineering facility right across the street. So we're going to have Darmok and Jalad set up shout out to anyone who gets that reference um you can also join us in our dabo station out in our wormhole uh if you feel like joining us but you know no uh no sp requirements no um time zone i mean we we have a kind of a global community too going on uh one of our main leaders is uh from uh, malaysia really enjoy working with him too um so yeah we're recruiting feel free to hit us up in uh CDSE recruitment um, or if you and your corp would like to just get along with another high sec mining corp slash um, little wormhole corp uh, please find us in CDSE associates chat channel and if you want to come blow us up feel free we're probably gonna have it's probably gonna happen anyways so come on awesome Mirdad let me ask you a question how many times have I mentioned on this show that this is not my freaking bedroom? This is a damn office slash spare bedroom. I have nothing. I have nothing to do. What's going on right behind me in this stupid, stupid office? I mean, if if you if you talk back to your wife, is it your bed? No, I would never sleep on this horrible little IKEA bed. It's probably so uncomfortable. <laughs> So anybody watching the stream or watching this in a replay, this is this is not my bedroom. This is an office. Calm down. I will not make that bed because it's not mine. Uh, Jesus. Jesus. I probably mentioned that like four times. Poor Kale. Yeah. Um I'm 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 awesome to hear that you're starting out a new corp. I mean, uh it's tough. Being a CEO, I know it's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of pushing your recruitment. I know it's a lot of uh, character management, uh, API management. Uh, you know, making sure everything's worked out. I know uh, 
There's no no desire in my heart to be an executor of a corp or an alliance. I, I would much rather spend my time doing other things. But oh, and I I mean I completely understand that, and that's that's what I I really enjoy about you is that you know I can jump in on this aspect, and once I you know get the 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 gears oiled a little bit, and that's the thing. I'm also waiting for three months now to get into the ships I want to fly. Right, like you know it's like okay and. Oh, it's a three-month queue until I can be good in attack three destroyer. Okay, well, um, what are we gonna do? All right, theory craft, theory craft the hell out of this game. Let me tell you about skill injectors. <laughs> Let me tell you about rent. Yeah, need them skill injector cracks. I'm sure you could find a good old C4, and uh, I'm sure I've heard wormhole uh, incomes are pretty ridiculous. They are good. Yes, they are. We're, we're we're I'm on my way to one. Don't worry. It's definitely it's definitely on the list on the buy orders. Well, with the new uh, micro skill injectors, you should be able to uh, get into them a lot easier. Is there there is a restriction on them though, isn't there? Uh, I mean, yeah. Depending on how high your skill level is, you can only inject X amount uh, in accordance with that little scale. So at some point, it becomes slightly useless. Right. I'm getting close to that cusp. Yeah. It was kind of a disappointment when I when I injected some skills. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to use one of these skill injectors. And I was like, oh, well, that didn't really do much to damage. Yeah. I had to do it on the uh, test server just to pull up, like, cruise missile spec to one so I could fit cruise missile tech two launchers. And I was like, ugh, this is the worst. weird skills you need for the alliance tournament that's something i really didn't think about until i started participating in the alliance tournament practices how many weird skills you need to be an effective at pilot i can only imagine well it's so much different than like the last three years of my life where i've been a fleet member or a recon pilot or a scout or a bomber or a boucher or like all in small subcaps all in you know ships of the line like but rarely in a battleship that needs to jam something right like speaking of bushing uh so Meredith, i was actually flying my my first uh bushing ship so if you don't know what bushing is it's the uh uh they their command destroyers like or pretty much anything that can fit the uh micro jump drive field generator where you can it's just the command destroyers Okay, so the command destroyers where you can jump your 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 ship and anything around you within like a certain a certain radius. Six K. Six K, thank you very much. Uh so yeah, I call one out for some fleet and that was the only ship in that fleet that I could fly, so I went and bought one and uh uh I lost it within about five minutes, so apparently I'm not good at the bushing. Did your FC shoot you? Because you boosted yourself off like No, like like the, you know, we we jumped in and like the fleet started scattering and and they said you know start b- booshing people off the field and so I booshed but I didn't boosh but me and a few DPS ships off and from the other fleet so I didn't last very long. I just didn't boosh enough. I didn't boosh well enough. I swear this is the last tangent, but yeah, uh, I had a good fleet where I was a boosher. Um, small gang engagement near our new home and uh they brought in a mixed gang nano gang they had two scimitars um a couple battle cruisers i think they had hurricanes stuff like that and we had a kind of a mixed fleet of uh i know we had a confessor fleet confessor fleet out there and uh i was in a boucher and i just got in there and we were burning down the first scimitar but it was holding and then we switched to a a battle cruiser and it was holding so i had to pull off some dps or some reps so i boosted the gila the scimitar and something else off their fleet pulled them way off reps dropped the scimitar that was left on field died the gila and the other uh, combat ship just burned back to the gate to, to resume fighting and left me and the scimitar out at 100 off the gate scram web hang out killed his drones sat there for the whole duration of the fight until everybody else was dead or gone just me and this interceptor 
sat there and killed the scimitar. <laughs> yeah, it's an it's an interesting um, it's an interesting ship uh, theory, uh, one that I have not mastered quite yet. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll play with a little bit more and uh, try to do that. But I I definitely I did like the look of the Bifrost. So maybe I'll try it again just because I like the way it looks. It's wonderful. It, it is deep and complex gameplay with offensive, defensive, and solo, and all kinds of weird interactions. Interactions we haven't even figured out yet. So, like, play around with it. It's super in It's super fun. Super fun. Buy like twenty and just lose them all. Yeah, I mean they're not they're not that expensive. I think it, the whole ship plus the fit was well under a hundred million. Yeah, yeah, super affordable. In fact, I think it was under fifty million. Yeah. It's good stuff. Anyway, so yeah, I mean that's that was pretty fun. I had pretty fun uh, past couple weeks uh, playing with playing around with CO two. I've been quite enjoying myself. Eve has become fun again. Sweet. But we should uh, we should walk this to the finish line here. Let's do it. Um... You want to cover the fail? Yeah, I guess we could. Apparently, uh, I found uh, uh, what I might call the fail of the week. Some some dude uh, had gotten scammed out of literally everything. And when I say everything, not just ISK, uh, but SP alike. If you're interested in reading, uh, I had to skim through it because there's quite a lot of it. But the TLDR is uh, some dude got to talking to another guy, and he said, uh, hey, did you hear this? Story about how this guy gave another person all of his isk to prove that he was trustworthy, and he's you know he's going to help uh, double his isk. Well, that escalated into not only did he give up all his isk to another player, but he gave up he extracted all of his skills and gave those injectors to another player. And the guy said, "Ha ha! Now I have all your skills, so I can post the uh, chat log of that." It's it's a doozy. I don't know how that happened. Wow. So Rip. don't don't be don't be that guy who gives up everything. Anyways, so that was my fail of the week that I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, but yeah, we can go ahead and start wrapping it up and talking about some a few different things. Uh, we can start by talking about a new Eve podcast, and that would be the Blue Horseshoe Club uh, by Rodin. Uh, I believe they have Clay, Kayla Bariana, or Arania, however you want to pronounce it, and a few other guests on there, but it is Rodin's new uh, market analysis show. Yeah, it's, I like it. It's a great little uh, little show. Um, talks pretty much mostly about the comings and goings of the economy and where they're placing it and Caleb's mad theories about the universe. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, we've had Rodin on here several times. So he's a good friend of the show. Uh, so in the meantime of them trying to get their own uh, feed, I'm, I'm probably going to go ahead and host their show onto um, our RSS feed until they can get something going. So I look forward to having that pop up on your, your, your feed reader soon. Uh, my Twitter inbox is awaiting an invite. All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not that I know anything about what they're talking about. Hi, Visk. Hey, hi, Visk. I spent it once. So uh, coming up this weekend, so not only is there the Theomaki, which we're going to be taking part of, but also Eve Glasgow, which is, oh, this is in Scotland. No. Where's Glasgow? Scotland, right? Scotland. Yeah. Yeah, see, I'm I know stuff. So there's gonna be <laughs> Eve Glasgow this weekend as well as a meetup in Melbourne, Australia. I know we're Melbourne. That's Australia. One and for then, two. Yeah, I know, right? Then also sometime within the next uh few days I should have a little bit more details on, on that, but uh Previous guest, Nikolai Mazinkov, he has the March of the New Bro. He said there's going to be upwards of 20 different events that they're going to be happening uh, for not just New Bros, but for anybody, any player who wants to get involved 
with that. So look forward to some notifications about the March of the New Bro events happening later this month. Yeah, New Bros. Woo. Gotta love our gotta love our New Bros. Uh, also nearing the end of the month, we're gonna have the Houston and Salt Lake City meetups. That's gonna be on the twenty fourth. And I, I want to say that the Houston meetups happen once a month. So if you miss it this time, check uh, evemeets. Dot, yeah, evemeet.net, and you can find out more uh, information about when they're going to be returning. The Vancouver Eve meetups, uh, the 20th. That's the third Tuesday of every month. Yep. And uh, one thing that I, I wanted to bring back a little bit, something I did a few times uh, when we first started the show, was talk about the Eve University classes. So the schedule for this week on the 31st at 0300 Eve time, so that's about the same time we start this show, on uh, Wednesday night is going to be game mechanics on Thursday, June 1st at 1900 Eve time is going to be the introduction to industry. And it's going to be uh, the very basics of industry and Eve online. Um, on Sunday, the fourth at 1600 is an introduction, a core introduction to mining. And the same day at 1900 is their weekly game mechanics Q and a. So you don't have to be a member of EV University to uh, take these classes, or you just you just go to EV University's website, or you hit them up in game and find out how to get on their comms, or you know to watch it or participate. I've actually been in a few of them. You learn some good stuff. So if you're new to Eve or maybe you want to learn some more advanced stuff, make sure you take one of their classes. Yeah. I've been thinking about it. Go ahead. I've just been thinking about taking a couple of classes just for, you know, getting a clear, clear uh, understanding of something. Not yeah. Just working off my own assumptions, right? Yeah, and it's and it's not just Eve University. So I'm I'm signed up for their mailing list. So every week I get a schedule showing what's what's available. But uh, you're talking about Agony Unleashed, Red versus Blue. Um, oh, what are some other ones? Um, Warp to me incursions. There's there's all kinds of newbie friendly groups that you can just you don't have to be a part of their organization. You can just jump in the fleets, jump on comms, figure out where they're at, and have some fun and learn something new. Spectre We're fleet actually, bombers part. Spectre Spectre fleet. Yeah. We uh, uh Sorellen's actually trying to host a uh, just a Friday night fight night outside of our uh, <clears throat> out of our citadel. Um, so yeah, anyone who wants to come blow everything up, please feel free to, but anyone who wants to come just do it with us and, you know, uh, try out some of their fits or whatnot in a bit of a fun, a little safer environment, maybe, uh, come find me on, uh, an Eve, you can PM me and, uh, we can set something up. Cool. Uh, Erica or Morgan, you got any things like that you want to share or some last minute thoughts? I'm good. Morgan's good. I actually I can think of at the moment. Morgan, I'm, I'm surprised that you've uh, held on this long. I know you're, you're notorious for I'm dipping out. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just usually like, you know, I'm usually fall asleep, but I'm already falling asleep by this point. Not right now, surprisingly, because, you know, I'm surprised. I'm sorry. It's not my fault. Yeah, there's like a few, a few shows where we'll be going into yeah, the you know, outros. Maybe. And I'm like, yeah, hey. usually, I, usually I start passing out around this point. I'm surprised. I'm probably in health. It probably helps that I drink like two, a Mountain Dew Kickstarter or something. Nice. Oh, I'm proud of you for hanging in here. Thank you. So, anyways, um, Merida, do you got any last minute thoughts on any, anything we've talked about? I'd like to thank everyone for persevering on last show there. Uh, there was some technical difficulties with my. Uh, Loss of a monitor a couple weeks ago. It forced everything onto my smaller monitor, which screwed up my resolution in OBS and caused a whole bunch of frame rate issues. I've been monitoring the show, having any issues this week. So thanks for everyone for persevering through the Gremlins. I know it's uh, didn't affect the audio format all that much, except for a loss of like the last five minutes of the show. But um, yeah, thanks uh, for everyone for persevering through these uh, annoying little technical glitches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I wish I had uh, some sort of shout out. Usually, give a shout out to uh, a podcast or audiobook or something that we've been listening to. But I've just been so busy that uh, I haven't really 
done done any of that. So I don't really have any shout outs or outros that I need to give. You can pull an Asher and just shout out orange juice. Yeah, orange juice because it's delicious. Actually, I'm not a big fan. I prefer grapefruit juice. So shout out to grapefruit juice. Nice. Anybody else have some shout outs? I'll oh, shout yeah. out to my boys at Sorel and uh, Xanaroff, Carolus, Nick, Draconia. Um, guys, keep it, keeping it real. Shinsan, thank you so much for all, all you've done and, and for helping make a great little corp thus far. Look forward to the future. And uh, just a quick audio book. If anyone's ever checked out The Truth uh, podcast, I really recommend it. It's a fantastic series. I love Truth. Truth is good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, actually, I, I guess I do want to shout out uh, definitely to, to E Radio. I mean, I know you guys are having some a weird, weird little rough patch right now with, with what's going on, but uh, you guys are still going strong and you're still playing a lot of good music. Uh, and I will continue to listen to E Radio for as long as you guys are around. Yeah, it's not like going to change anything that we do. So, yeah, that's true. Um, but if you're interested in listening to some more of our podcasts, you can find us uh, on iTunes. You can find us on TuneIn, Google Play, or whatever other podcast reader you can find. Just go and search for Mind Clash. That's two words, Mind and Clash. Uh, you can also find us on the Crossing Zebra, Crossing Zebra's po- uh, podcast feed. Uh, and, yeah. We don't need to crowdsource the slogan. Our slogan is Monday Night My Clash. Be there. O two hundred. Yeah, it happens literally every Monday. Even if we forget it's Monday. I did. I honestly forgot it was Monday. And I was like kind of scrambling earlier today trying to put together notes and figure out what the fuck we were going to do. It was my first day off in three weeks this Monday, so I was enjoying myself today. Yay. Yeah, so that's all I got. Right on. Thanks for coming uh, to our guests. Uh, we appreciate it every week. Uh, thanks for listening in Twitch. Thanks for listening on the Rewind. Replay? Good night. Not the Rewind. Good night, everyone. See you guys. Bye. Good night.